cyclones, like heavy cyclones, Little Happy wouldn't really exist. <laughs> so the more I watch this movie, like every time it hits me now, because it's like, yeah, okay, it's an Andy, like this is very, just like, don't take it seriously. But then the movie is like talking about serious stuff, and it's like kind of this, you know, duality that you have with it when you're watching it. Because honestly, <laughs> you know, one of those cyclones would wipe Little Happy out so quickly. So I'm going to say they're not there all year around. That's what I'm going to say. Because oh I think they will all drown. Because cyclones. And, you know, you want to say, like, the whole climate change thing. Well, cyclones will get worse with climate change. So there's really no way around it. Um, See, but, but, so but, I'm going to say maybe just, like, summer months. I don't know. But N- <laughs> Nandi and Bahari, uh, last week, they talked about how this is the only life they've ever known is on Little Happy. Uh, so Which I'm, is I'm, another I'm not... thing, yeah, <laughs> why I struggle to really buy into it, yes, because well, that's multiverse. impossible, Jay. Jay? Uh, yeah, I'm not saying it's you're impossible. wrong at all, I'm just, just <laughs> picking up on something. And also, I, lo- I love how that's actually their, like, actually their place, so, like, supposedly, you know, and then all these scientists, people coming here with their sharks, and like, I, yeah, it's, it's funny when you start seeing it in that light, you know. When when Shaw says, "When did your shark problem become our shark problem?" So, mm. when did all of your problems become Nandi and Bahari's problems? Exactly. <laughs> the only the only two survivors of this little like you know island off the coast of Mozambique. Yeah. If you know all of that, then it it does kind of take you out of it, and it's unfortunate. I wish like you know we could have had a little. I don't know, details to maybe, like, work around it or maybe just place it somewhere months? else. Uh, I don't know why it had to be Mozambique. Like, I mean, it could have been anywhere else. But, yeah, they put it in Mozambique where cyclones hit bad. That's <laughs> unfortunate. Like, Africa is big. It's got a big coast. They literally could have put it anywhere else. But, yeah. Yeah, they didn't when, deep sea When's too. summer season? Summer oh, runs from November till February. Oh, okay, because... Your winter um, or summer. Okay, so then cyclone season's January and February in Mozambique. But this is also another world. I mean, these are genetic... Well, genetically, I I take it as like a... Have you seen Fringe? Yeah. There's like different... There's like different verses. There's alternate Walter. So this is alternate somewhere. Mozambique. Yeah, it's alternate Mozambique, where... Yeah, that's the best explanation I have. Where there's climate change, but no cyclones. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, I grew up in Florida, and when that when crawl happened, yeah, there's hurricanes, but I've never heard of like a like a alligator farm being wiped out in like massive attacks. But I was like, this is awesome. So I guess I didn't. I, I guess I never really thought about that. Now, yeah, Zanandi, if you were gonna be Transferring some seal guts from a bucket into a, a little drone. Would you do it barehanded or would you put gloves on? <laughs> right? <laughs> like, the, every time. Oh this is Jesus. disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> I can literally feel that stuff going underneath my nails and I cringe every time I watch it because it's such a nice, nice little tight shots of him doing it. Yeah. <laughs> Great transition. Um, no, I would definitely wear gloves. Not gonna lie, not gonna lie. It'll the, take forever to scrap that out <laughs> from under your nails. Well, that's it. The purpose of the seal guts is because in the next scene, they're gonna, the next chapter, they're gonna like use the drone to try and attract the seals, and they're swimming along right behind it, and he's got seal guts all in his fingernails. So the yeah. shark, the shark's gonna come along for the seal guts. Go, oh, there's some over here on this guy's hand. I'll take that too. Thank you very much. Great <laughs> uh, <Straight> point. <laughs> but also, it's just disgusting. It's just horrendous. <laughs> Ooh, yeah no i don't know yeah i'll put some plastic over my hands it's fine or maybe use a scoop <laughs> i'll use a scoop <laughs> yes anything else just tip the bucket into the bag yeah that would be great and probably faster and easier and we're done I think you just get... because i mean can you imagine the smell as well yeah <gasps> there's two guys there one of them hold the bag open one of them tip the bucket into it moving on there we go. Efficient, quick. Oh, these yep. guys, honestly. Minimal seal guts under your fingernails, which is, I think, the main aim for everything in life. <laughs> totally. Mark, are you still thinking about crawl? Yeah. 
I am. <laughs> it's unfair though for you to say that because you're like putting an American movie in your America where, like, you know, if you want to come and make a movie in Africa or South Africa, then at least know your geography, Americans. Oh, that's fair. But like, I mean, listen, I love a lot of the kills in this one. It's fun. I know like, yeah, we talked about, yeah, I don't really like get like kill kills, but if you can quickly talk about it, it's fun kills. Like, yeah. I must important. say, it, it had a good, it was the cheese that I wanted, you know? Yeah, there's there's some great kills coming up in future chapters <laughs> um, that I cannot wait to talk about. <laughs> so I, I like Emma's convincing of Spin to, to place the tracker, or to, to trace the tracker, I should say. Uh, where she, you know, she's complimenting him, you, you can trace anything. And he's like, yeah, I'll try. He's like, no, you, you'll do more than try, you'll do it. Go, off you go. I just, I just like that, the dynamic of the two of them in that scene where... It starts off where she's just kind of complimenting him and being all nice and friendly, and then she's like, "Off, off we go, go do it now, come on, skedaddle." I mean, they they needed to get it done, right? Yeah, because she saw that tracker, and she knows that he's that spins not always like the the quickest to get things done. Hence the sixty five percent on the Triton. You know, he could put his finger out and get it done. Off you go. Um, so I guess they might have just gotten there then. I know they have all the servers and desks set up, but that's probably some like maybe she's doing her videos there the first week, couple weeks, something like that. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Yeah. Good old spin. Good old spin. Yeah. I like the character dynamics in this one a lot. I actually wanted to see more of it. I told Corey it would have actually been cool if, you know, like in the beginning, they did like a scene with everyone on Little Happy. And it was just cool, like everyone just chilling and hanging out and get kind of like, okay, Shaw's the old one and like Maya with her, like, you know, uh, uh, Japanese culture that she's teaching them. And it's just like this nice scene, this dinner scene. It would actually, I think, been cool if they added a dinner scene with these new guys. But it's like, oh, you've got the tension now. And just like more, you know, like, because I like the character dynamics. I like the relationships between everyone. I kind of like the the thing, you know, with Lucas and Maya, where like, he was like, yeah, I'll bring one of my guys to come and check it out. And Maya was like, oh, I've got a grandpa. Like, I would actually like to see, see more of that play off because I, I enjoyed it. I know it's not really like the deep blue sea that we know, but I felt like this movie from the beginning kind of went for character anyway. So, yeah, I think like that, that, that would have been cool. Like, I mean, if we can get a sequel with this, bring it, bring them all back. They all survived. <laughs> And also the dinner scenes, they're they're the best dressed during their dinner scenes too. The the shirt games were on point oh, so during true. that scene. So that means we get more shirts that are sweet and more shots. So I mean I'm I'm all for that. And more of that guy being spin being attacked for his veganism. <laughs> then all the new guys can jump on him for it. So we want yeah. to have like a, a, a Titanic esque kind of thing where they have a dinner at the at the rich wealthy place and then the dinner at the below desks. So they have the comparison between the two. <laughs> Yeah, because we didn't have a lot of interaction also with, like, Lucas and the mercenaries or, like, and, and, and the uh, genetic, uh, like, lab people and Nandi and Bari, for instance. Like, that could also have been, like, interesting dynamics, I think. Yeah, because like, they disappear yeah. pretty fast. They did, right? Yeah, they, they're not big But I guess they could the be film. doing their... But she does... I guess I looked in her apartment, and I, I can't explain it. I mean, maybe it just costs more money to have people on set, more setups... But she has a lot of stuff she makes, so maybe she's making, uh, I don't know, stuff that he can sell. So she's actually working somewhere on the island while they're out researching so they can sell it for money when he goes back to the mainland. I don't know. That's what I can assume. That's my best guess. Wait, but where's this second dinner at? Is it in the same place? Are they on the boat? Is there dancing afterwards where they spin around in circles? I I think think it's on the boat. Oh, really? What do you think? Oh, <laughs> this, you, have the, this you, you have the comparison of the environments as well. Like, you, like, it's this oh. really clean and orderly boat as opposed to the more uh, informal uh, uh, little but, happy. But I mean, that boat isn't really like fancy or anything. Like that's, that's like true. you're going to sit in this little cube, very uncomfortable, which could also like yeah, add to the dynamics, actually, I guess. And like, what kind of thing would they be eating? It can't. It's going to be like rations or like... Bulk, bulk MREs packs, like tins. No, crayfish. They're gonna go for it. They're gonna go big. <laughs> crayfish Stuff from Richard's lab. <laughs> Wait, yeah, they're, 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 eating they're eating Bella. They're eating Bella. 
Yeah, actually, shark fin soup and spin is like going off on a tangent. Like he can't; he's ready to jump in the water and swim back. That's like a real GMO right there. Like a literally GMO. Yeah. Like, yeah. Well, I guess they are GMO normally. Oh, that that, is that's why they're so muscular. They're eating the they're eating the super intelligent. Yes. Genetically modified shark. <gasps> when, Beef they, cakes. when they started this trip, they all look like spin, but now what hey. <laughs> Whoa. Do they all go limitless, like full limitless or full chuck when they take bites? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> my God. Why couldn't we see that? <laughs> Whoa. Because if you saw what um, what Beach went through in the second one, then with his full chuck, these guys are going full chuck chuck season uh, two. But but Durant was drinking oh, like Durant. N- neat, neat vials of whatever the hell it, that orange gunk was these yeah. guys, these guys it's, it's more diluted into the shark meat so i think like it. it might be lesser for these these yeah. guys so he was doing like straight shots of 150 yeah, exactly yeah and then they were just doing kind of that and coke yes exactly yeah but it still gets you yeah it still gets you i mean look at the guys <laughs> wow how long have they been on a boat a week <laughs> yeah just this morning uh, <laughs> just this morning <laughs> So what would Carter Blake look like? Or Trader Slent? Wait, oh. Trent Slater, if Doesn't they ate that stuff. <laughs> um, hmm. You know the the, the images that went, that went viral with that little kid bodybuilder a few years ago? Yeah. It's like that kid grown up. Just like <laughs> advanced Whoa. that kid 25 years. And that's what you'd get. <laughs> Just n- nothing, nothing that makes any kind of sense to anything in the world, is what I'm thinking. Anyway, do you want to know how deep and blue this chapter is? Yeah, it's it's not very deep and it's quite blue. Uh, basically, it's um, they do a, a lot of uh, underwater swimming around uh, in this one, but there is also most of it takes place on the surface, about just off the off the surface level. So overall, average is about minus six to seven meters or twenty one twenty two feet deep, and it's about fifty six percent blue, very blue. Lots of underwater, lots of blue skies, as we predicted at the start of this. This is a quite a blue film, but not a very deep film. So that is that is proving to be true so far. Where does it stand in the rankings? Uh, this this chapter, just based on this film, it is the second bluest and the second deepest. Uh, with the fir- oh. the first chapter, chapter one, being the deepest and bluest so far. Do you think this is gonna, this is going to be the bluest movie, or I no? Think, yeah, I the think, other one's the reddest. I yeah. think it'll be the bluest and shallowest of the films. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like this is Coral Reef, right? Yeah. Yeah, they, yeah. There's, and there's no like underwater base where they have whole mm. scenes taking place. Mm. <laughs> I do like the lack of oppressiveness. The second one was good, but it really claustrophobia did in there. It's it nice did. to have the wide open. It's nice to have the wide open spaces again. Yeah, and it's nice to just be a completely different film and plot. <laughs> was, like two, two was the same as one for the most part, in a, a lot of ways. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, Zanadi, any other thoughts on on this chapter or the film as a whole? Yeah, no, I'm just all Team Sally. Sally's my girl. Sally's great. And uh, yeah, like it's enjoyable. It's definitely enjoyable. It's Deep Blue Sea and also looking forward to Shark Week 2022. Yeah, we are. Yeah. The return of Dr. Misty Calhoun. Hopefully. Dun, dun, Fingers dun. crossed. Oh, we get like a gearing up montage at the start of this one. I like, I, I love a gearing up montage. Just with uh, Lucas's guys just all putting the gear on. Yeah. Um. <laughs> oh, it's a good time to have that. And, and Beefcake montage. Beefcake montage. Yeah, beefcake montage. And when they start swimming underwater, I... I'm not. I'm not really a score guy. I'm not really a music guy. But I, I heard notes from like the 2001 the Space Odyssey score in this a little bit with some synth over the top. It felt. It sounded. It, it really worked for the scene. But I couldn't shake that hearing that. Uh, cool. So listeners, listen out for that if you if you want to go back and listen to the scene. No, it's good. I mean, it, it adds. It's definitely different, right? It's, yes. It's a lot different than the other two. I dug it. Yeah. 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 Okay, so Andy, where can people find you online? Should you wish to be found? <laughs> on Twitter, you may find me on Twitter. Would you like to uh, be more specific and provide Ed a handle? Zanandi on Twitter. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> you're, just, you're there. If, if, it's, if they're meant to find you, they'll find you. Listen, if you really want to find me, you will, I guess. You know. <laughs> just, just mash the keyboard if it's meant to be. It's meant to be. Find me in the deep blue of Twitter. 
Nice. And listeners, you can find this podcast on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.